In today's video, I would like to show you how I created this informative top and versus others data visualization by combining two readily available online best practices. I also want to highlight why it's never enough to simply copy paste the DEX code or DEX pattern without fully understanding your problem and the solution provided in the online code. Doing that might lead to frustration as I experienced it while working on this project. So buckle up as we dive into some fun topics with DEX, data validation, and data visualization. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Rowan and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. So here is my problem. I plan to implement a Topan versus others comparison using SQL's BI Topan versus others pattern and hence with Foamy's excellent bar chart data visualization. You will find links to both original sources in the description box below, so be sure to check them out. Both articles and videos go to great lengths to explain how they work, and in theory, replicating them should have been pretty straightforward. However, knowing that a pattern or solution exists might not be enough, especially when you start tweaking it. But hey, instead of me talking, let's take a look at all the things that threw me off and how I solved my problem with these resources. Here we have the original demo file that you can download from SQL BI. This time, I wanted to start with this data to ensure it will be easier to replicate and follow along. To start with, I need to create a year-to-date pattern. It includes a date with sales calculated column and three measures, show value for dates, sales year to date and sales previous year to date. This is because I want to show year over year change, assuming we run this report during the year. Now that we have these year to date sales measures, we can start tweaking the top and versus others pattern. Let's call this new measure sales year to date top N. Then we can copy and paste the DEX code from the original sales amount measure. After that, I'm going to replace the sales amount measure with sales year to date. And because I'm lazy, I just highlight the sales amount text, hit Ctrl Shift L on my keyboard, which will highlight all instances of the measure and start typing sales year to date. Just like that, we have replicated the solution. Let's chuck it into a table matrix visual alongside the sales year to date measure. The sales values are exactly the same and at the bottom of each category, we have others listed as well. Now we need to replicate the ranking and visible row measures to allow us to filter the table to only show top N. For the ranking year to date measure, it's as simple as copy pasting the original measure and changing the underlying sales amount measure to sales year to date. For the visible row year to date measure, we just need to replace ranking with ranking year to date. Now we can add the ranking year to date to our matrix and the visible row year to date to the filter panel. And just like that, we have the pattern replicated for the year to date cells. It's time to move over to the cells previous year to date top end measure. I'm smart, so I just copy paste the cells year to date top end measure and replace all instances of cells year to date with cells previous year to date. And we are good to go. Let's also check the calculation for the previous year as well. Now we can see that while in the cameras category, each top selling item in 2009 had sales in 2008 as well, in the computers category, two items are brand new products, which can be confirmed on page nine. So far so good, and I'd say it was easy. Before we can talk about data visualization, we need to consider something. Namely, the huge difference between the cells coming from the top three items versus others. If we were to visualize this result as is, we wouldn't be able to draw any insights from the top three items by category. 
Watch what happens when I change the matrix into a bar chart. The year over year change coming from the top 3 is hardly visible and definitely not that insightful, even if you go into full screen mode. This means that I have to split this into two report elements. So let's revert it back to a matrix for data validation purposes and copy it below. Remove the filter from the visible row field and search for others in the product name field. And we are good to go. Well, not really. This is the first part where we could mess up the whole analysis if we were to move ahead without any data validation. Let's take another look at the two matrices. And once we identify the problem, let's see how to adjust the sales year to date top end measure to work with the others category as well. Have a look at this. The value for others in both categories is different in the two matrices. More importantly, the others at the bottom shows the total year-to-date and previous year-to-date values. And why is that? Well, simply put, there is no other product selected. So when we get to the sales others variable index, which is this line, we deduct $0 as sales of top products from sales of all. In other words, as the only product listed here is others, the sales coming from the top selling products is zero. This is exactly where I realized I need a dedicated DEX measure to use in a separate database that only shows others. Using Alberto's code, all we need to do is tweak it a little by removing a few lines since we are limiting this calculation to others only. Let's add this new measure to our matrix at the bottom. And now we have the right year to date sales value for others. Just like before, replicate this for previous year as well. Copy paste the year to date measure and replace all instances of year to date with previous year to date. And we are good to go. You see, that's the second point where I had to spend some time to understand what's wrong with my implementation. Luckily, this one was a bit easier to figure out. Year-to-date sales for the previous year in the matrix on the top for others in the cameras category are $616,000, while in the bottom matrix it is $580,000. This means something is wrong. And you see, just by copy-pasting the DAX code, I spent zero seconds thinking about how it works. But let me save some time for you and show you the problem in my code, or I should rather say in my implementation. You see, when we calculate sales for others, we use a top N DAX calculation. And when I replaced all sales year to date measure with sales previous year to date, I also changed the base measure for the top N ranking. While in some cases this change might be useful for me, I need to rank products based on sales year to date to ensure a true comparison between years and the right calculation. So even though this measure is for the previous year, in the top end calculation, I need to use sales year to date. And just like that, we are done with the final data validation. Unfortunately, when I implemented this solution, the last thing I thought was to read through the code and to think about each part of the text. How silly of me. Once I fixed these issues by dedicating some time to understanding each component of the DEX code provided by Alberto, I was ready to visualize the data. And for that, I wanted to replicate the data which I found out recently, this one. In a single bar chart, we can represent four key data points, sales previous year, sales current year, year over year difference, and percentage change. Let's head back to Power BI. I'm going to replicate Fomi's bar chart solution to visualize the data. So I'm not going to go over every single step of it. If you're keen to learn how he has done it, watch the video I added to the description box below. Allow me to do some video editing magic and get to the point where the solution is implemented with all the additional measures. Just to reiterate what I mentioned a few seconds ago, if I were to use the original top end versus other calculation without splitting it into two dedicated visual elements, it would look like this. 
all of the information we wanted to see is there, but to ensure that the others group can fit into the visual, the X axis is super wide. Or at least it's too wide to fully understand what's happening with the top end product. Let's fix it. And with that, plus all the additional measures that we need to create for this beautiful visualization, we are good to go. We can add the category field as a slicer on the page to further enhance understandability. It's also a good way to visualize top 5, 10, 15 or 20 items with their year over year change compared to the rest of the portfolio. Just like this. I truly believe this is a very impactful and insightful visualization. Today serves as a proof that while there are many fantastic solutions available on the internet, basic knowledge and logical thinking remain your best tool in your tool belt. There were many instances where this solution could and did go wrong simply because I attempted to implement it in 20 minutes. The outcome? Well, let's just say it took me more than 20 minutes to resolve the DEX issue and address the data validation concerns. But at the end of the day, I'm happy that I managed to combine these two techniques to create a data visualization that's not only meaningful and visually appealing, but also quite flexible thanks to the top end slicer. If you're curious about all the details of the solution, be sure to follow the links below to download the PBIX file from my blog. And if you have any questions or feedback about this solution, feel free to drop them into the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And please make sure to visit both SQL 3i article and Fomi's original data visualization solution to fully grasp the details of those approaches. Learn from my mistake and invest time in understanding the solution rather than resorting to mere copy pasting. Since you stayed till the end, I'm sure you found value in this video. If that's the case, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to explore more of my tutorials like the ones here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.